Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, everyone on social media. Thank you for joining the City of Refuge Church this morning. This morning, saints, we're talking about pursuing love in the great commandment, the foundation of love. So without further ado, let us pray. Father God of heaven, we come boldly before your throne of grace this morning to say thank you, to worship you, to honor you, to praise you, to be with you this morning. Sit with us now and become our holy guest as this time does become divine. It is in the mighty and precious name of Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. Saints, this morning I'm coming from the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verses 17 and 18. And I'm going to read what it says. It says in, chap in uh, chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. The message, this message is the first in the series, saints, called Pursuing Love. As we will see in the message this morning, love is the primary quality or fruit that is to be permanent uh, about all else. It is something God wants us to pursue in every relationship we're involved in, saints. The Greek word for pursue is diako, which is the same word Paul used in Philippians, where he said, I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. It's a strong word that, that denotes to pursue without hostility and to seek eagerly after. You see, in the next few weeks, we will see how God wants us to pursue love in our marriages, our relationships with our children, the household of God, and with unbelievers as well. You see, in the message today, we'll be begin by defining the various Greek words that are used for love and how love is to be preeminent, uh, pre, the preeminent quality or fruit in all that we do as Christians. You see, the definitions will help us to understand the foundation for which love is pursued with God and in all of our other relationships. Saints, love for God and one another must be at the very foundation of all that we do as Christians. Without it, we are, we are only making noise and commotion and we are nothing without love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 2 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. You see, saints, before we can really fully understand what it means to pursue love with God and, and all other relationships he has established in our lives, we must first have some good working definitions as to what love is. What's love have to, got to do with it? It's important to understand that the Greek language has more than one word for love. You see, number one, the agape or Christian love. Agape or agapo are, are used to describe the attitude of God towards his son, the human race, and to all those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Agape or Christian love. This is the most type of important type of love, saints, because all other expressions of love should flow out of true Christian love or agape love. Therefore, we will discuss this in detail and just briefly discuss the other expressions of love that are involved in the relationship to God. The love of, of the Father and Jesus is this shows that God's love is a wonderful love of intimacy and unity. 
You see, John 3, 16, very familiar passage of scripture. We love quoting it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, saints, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. The love of God expressed to those who believe this, this shows that in order for us to come into the fullness of, of his love, there must be a response on our part. John 14, 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. See, love can only be known from the action it prompts. God's love is seen in the gift of his son. There, this is not the love of complacency or affection that is. It, is, it, 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 it was not drawn out by any excellency in, in its objects. Romans 5, chapter 5 verse 8 says this, but God demonstrates his own love towards us. In that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, says Christian love or agape love has God for its primary object. And expresses itself first of all in implicit obedience to his commandments. Christian love or agape love has God for its primary object object. John chapter 14 verse 15 and 21 If you love me keep my commandments. He who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. You see, saints, Christian love, whether exercised towards your mate, your children, the brethren, or towards men in general, is not an impulse from the feelings that you have. It, 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 it does not always run with the natural inclinations, nor does it spin itself only upon those for whom some affinity is discovered. Christian love seeks the welfare of all and works no ill to any. It seeks opportunity to do good to all men, especially toward them that are of the household of faith. Romans, you can see, uh, read Romans 15, 2, 13, 8 through 10. Galatians 6, 10, 1 Corinthians 13, and Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. The foundation of love, saints. In summary, Christian love or agape love expresses the deep and constant love of a perfect being towards entirety, unworthy, unworthy objects, producing and fostering a, a, a reverential love in them toward the giver and a practical love towards those who are partakers of the saint. And a desire to help others to seek the giver. You see, it, it is an unselfish love, ready to serve. This is the kind of love God wants us to pursue with all of our hearts, mind, soul, and body. Christian or agape love. Number two is Philadelphia or brotherly love. The second kind of love I want to, to mention is simply called brotherly love. It is a love for the brethren, a fraternal kind of love that simply shows kindness towards one another. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 9 says, But concerning brotherly love, Philadelphia, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love agape one another. Brotherly love. To love the brethren, saints. Number three, affectionate love or 
philo. Philo love is a is a is a affection that is expressed between friends and individuals. It expresses sentiment or feeling. This is the kind of love Jesus had for his beloved disciple John. It is the kind of love that is often expressed between a husband and wife. Hmm. John chapter 20, verse 2 says, Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. You see, this, this is also the kind of love Peter displayed to Jesus when Jesus asked him whether he loved him or not. John 21, 15 says, for, uh, says So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, <laughs> Son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. It is good. It is God's desire that we all learn how to be affectionate towards one another in a real and proper way. Romans 12, 10 says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. The preeminence of love. What I really want us to see in this message today, saints, is that God's ultimate desire for our lives, above all else, is that we would truly learn how to love him and, know, and one another more than any other fact of facet of our life in him. We need to learn to love him and one another, saints. This is more important than fulfilling our call. Being exercised in gifts and ministries or anything. Without love, we are nothing, saints. We need to get that through our heads. Without love, we are nothing. Love is the glue, is the glue that holds everything together. Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Of the three essential ingredients in our relationship to God, the Bible says love is the greatest. It's greater than our faith because our faith works by love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these three is love. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You see, saints, if we are lacking in faith and desire for other things that are important to the kingdom life, could it be that our love is what is really lacking? <clears throat> you got to think about that, saints. If we are lacking in faith, and desire. Could it be that our love is lacking? To love God with all of our hearts, soul, and mind, and body is the first and great commandment. The second is to love our neighbor as ourselves. See, this is the royal law of which James speaks, speaks of as well. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In the message today, saints, I have simply tried to give you a foundation, a foundation as to what love is so that you can know what it truly means to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and what it will mean to love the people that God has placed in your life. In the following weeks, we'll talk 
about and shall discover what it means to love God and how we go about doing that. Pursue love, saints. Pursue love. Love the Lord. Love your neighbor. And pursue the love of Christ. Amen. Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard this morning. We just love you. We worship you. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you for sitting with us and becoming our holy guest this day. It is in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. If you're here and you're watching and you have never, ever confessed, accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, then we have, you have to understand that you're not saved. And we give you the opportunity to become saved every Sunday that we're here. Confess. Believe. You can be saved today. It's, it's, real not, it's really not that difficult to become saved. To have a personal relationship with the Lord. Because that's what, that's all he desires for us to have is to be and to have a personal relationship with him mm -hmm. so we give you that opportunity we also give you the opportunity to link up and join up with the body of believers by way of the city of refuge church if you're searching and looking for a church home and don't have one we give you that opportunity to become joint heirs with us as well as we are joint heirs with Christ. And our final, my final plea this morning is if you need prayer or rededication in your life, which we all need prayer, <laughs> we need to be continuing to do that daily is praying, you know, pray without ceasing. We give you that opportunity. We have great men and women of God who love the Lord and have a personal relationship with him. Whatever your situation, your circumstance is, we give you the opportunity, opportunity for prayer. Salvation, church membership, joining the body of Christ in prayer rededication. If you have a prayer need, we have a link for, on our website that will... Uh, let you spell out what your prayer request is, and you can become an, and it can be anonymously done. Uh, you want to join? We give you that opportunity to do that as well on our website. Amen. If you want to give, we all should be giving ten percent. We make that available to you. There's multiple ways to give here at the City of Refuge Church. Multiple avenues, multiple ways to give. That will be in the description or comment section of uh, this broadcast. We, like I said, we we have multiple ways, multiple ways. One avenue that doesn't work for you, we give you another way to give here at the City of Refuge Church. Amen. We know that God loves a cheerful giver. We should be giving what uh, the Lord lays upon your heart. And we, we should be giving 10% of our gross income. Amen. Amen. So without further ado, join. We have any announcements. Join us next week live in person, in color, through Facebook Live next week, next Sunday. Pastor uh, Jim Dembski will be bringing the, the word next week. Amen. Uh, join us live. We'll be uh, so great to have you. Continue to pray. Continue to love yourself. Love your neighbor. But mostly saints. Love the Lord. Love the Lord. Pursue love. The message there. Make sure you share this broadcast with your family, your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, even your enemies. Just share, just share, just share the message. All right, amen. 
God loves you. We love you too. We'll see you next week. God willing. <laughs> A lot of things are going on. Uh, God willing. Uh, we'll see you live in, uh, in person through Facebook Live next Sunday. Have an awesome blessed week. Love on somebody. Love your neighbor. Love, love, love the Lord. And continue to worship him. Amen. Amen. So have a blessed week. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next Sunday. 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you. Have an awesome week. Be blessed.